गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल द स्टूडेंट पार्टिसिपेंट्स माई फैकल्टी को लीग्स हेड्स ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट डायरेक्टर स्कूल ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग डॉक्टर ज्योत्ना सिंह सीनियर डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर अजय सिंह रिस्पेक्टेड चेयरमैन ट्रस्टीज ऑफ आई आई एल एम ग्रुप आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दी कॉमनवेल्थ डिक्ट्री सेशन ऑफ अवर ए वेरी सक्सेसफुल समर अकेडमिक इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो वी थैंक ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु स्पेयर देयर टाइम Uh, despite uh, connectivity issues uh, that they they successfully attended uh, our summer programs and uh, it was a, a fruitful uh, use of the of the time by by the student participants uh, the faculty members worked hard uh, under the guidance of uh, director of engineering dr josna singh so that they could uh, deliver uh, quality content to you so in 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 the present time uh, it was basically uh, going tough for all uh, to stay at home and uh, we are proud that uh, iilm uh, uh, utilized uh, the the basically the faculty members of iilm utilized the time uh, in in a in a very positive way and uh, delivered highly technical uh, applied and uh, industry ready uh, content to you uh, so we have been looking uh, at the feedback from the participants the the participants uh, they are very happy uh, with the content with the with the quality quality of the lectures and uh, some of the the speakers were were uh, uh, international speakers so by sitting at the comfort of your home uh, you could enjoy uh, the lectures by eminent persons so in uh, i will just give a give a brief uh, background to this common well dictionary program uh, so basically the different departments uh, which we will introduce of course uh, later by by director of engineering dr josna so different departments organized uh, the the summer programs in their respective domains uh so today it is the common well dictionary program of uh, all the summer summer programs of respective departments and today uh, the keynote talk will be delivered by an eminent speaker uh, professor b s satyanarayan who who will be joining shortly so uh, just in a in a couple of minutes so once he join uh, i will just briefly introduce him and uh, then uh, you will listen to his talk for uh, about an hour and then uh, after that uh, the respective uh, departments uh, and their hods and coordinators will be introduced to you so when uh, once you listen to the talk uh, through the youtube uh, medium you can uh, type your questions when when the talk is going on and uh, so we will we will pick up the questions and we will try to answer the questions uh, as as the talk goes on so and uh, the total program duration today's program uh, it is it is it is about 2 hours so uh, then then we will play a small video to show the to show the journey how far we have come how we have come the the emotions and the uh, and the feelings of the students the the cheerful faces of the students 
so so you will see yourself and uh, of course the the journey doesn't just end here uh, so uh, the students are from varied backgrounds the the school students uh, engineering students so we we hope that uh, your association with uh, with iilm will will continue in some in some some way so whatever whatever is 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 the convenient channel uh and also uh through this summer program we we could uh, we could reach to 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 the country sorry uh prominent institutions across the country prominent schools across the country and uh, our efforts were Uh, well appreciated uh, which we could see see from the feedback and one more interesting thing that uh, in in some of the summer programs there were highly industry related talks so when the advertising was done on uh, on linkedin instagram uh, we have uh, been receiving requests even from uh, other industry people as well that whether whether they could uh, they could join the talk and uh, we were very glad to see that and of course we we allowed people and uh, so they they also could enjoy enjoy the talk uh, so that was the format and uh, of course the there are no boundaries to the knowledge gained Uh, it is it is a ever ever going or a, a continuous process the knowledge transfer uh some of the topics for example uh, might have been advanced for the students uh, but uh, of course when if you for example uh, in the domain of biotechnology probably bioinformatics could be a bit advanced for for some students because to understand bioinformatics you need to cover lot of fundamentals of biotechnology but uh, at least you could pick some some terminology uh, out of out of that and then once you uh, progress into your senior years you and you attend a training program at that time uh definitely uh, it will be much much easier for you to relate to the things similarly in another uh, in other programs in in robotics again uh, some of the terminology of the microcontroller sensors the interfacing various data ports could could be advanced but again so uh, you basically pick some some points out of that and later on when you you do do the things you repeat the things uh, of course things uh, will be much easier similarly for uh, mechanical engineering participants and uh, civil engineering uh, participants again there were some of the talks were very uh, at par uh, for example some of the lectures were exactly those lectures which were delivered to a pure industry audience for example the uh, lectures on uh, die casting uh, the lectures on simulation of uh, die casting uh, these were very uh, advanced uh, lectures and uh, because i also attended the lectures myself uh, those lectures were exactly at par with industry standards uh, of course you uh, there might be little bit difficulty in, in understanding but at least uh, you are you are lucky that uh, uh, you could uh, attend uh, those uh, those lectures and of, of course when uh, you uh, basically uh, progress you you will definitely it will be much much easier for you and also if we talk about the the outcomes uh, uh, okay i think professor satyanarayan has joined let me just check just a moment uh, just a moment
just bear with me for a couple of minutes. I'm just uh, interacting with our keynote speaker. Yeah, so basically, uh, if we talk about the the outcomes of uh, of the the program, uh, one of uh, the outcome is uh, the internship part, the internship and the placement part. Now, uh, internship are uh, uh, internships are equally important as as the placement. Uh, now the kind of uh, knowledge or the skills you have uh, picked from this summer program. So now you focus on to your next step that you will use uh, uh, this knowledge for, for your next step, which is the internship. And uh, for some students, it is, of course, the job. Uh, and it is a golden opportunity uh, for those uh, uh, students who will be go who will be doing the internship because uh, the skills or the knowledge which you have picked you you can use directly for example again uh, referring to some some common skill areas like uh, within the robotics domain you might have heard the word robotics or automation or mechatronics but you might not be familiar with the, uh, the working of uh, the microcontroller or the sensor. So now when you apply for uh, uh, for an internship program, you, you write on your CV. Uh, so you write on your CV at, at the very top that you, you attended this, uh, uh, this program and uh, following are the skill sets you gained and definitely you, you will have uh, an advantage uh, over other candidates because uh, uh, what uh, the industry uh, is looking at nowadays it is it is basically the skills which which you have you might have maybe uh, multiple pages of uh, of the cv uh, but uh, the the hr or yeah, so our chief guest has just joined. Uh, yeah, so uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I welcome to uh, I welcome to you uh, on the on the valedictory session of this uh, summer academic internship program 2020 organized by uh, IALM Engineering College, which is located in uh, Greater Noida in the, in the Knowledge Park area. And uh, uh, this is quite a vibrant area. Uh, I, I uh, basically suggest the participants later on in future if, if they could come to this area. This is quite a vibrant area a lot of academic institutions and uh, connectivity to metro uh, noida greater noida expressway connectivity then then the yamuna expressway connectivity quite a vibrant area uh, so okay uh, without wasting now time i i will just straight away go to our session now so we we are going to join uh, professor satyanarayan's talk soon so let me introduce him uh, Professor uh, B. S. Satyanarayan. He is a uh, founder CEO in uh, Satyabharti Consultants Bangalore. He has 35 years of experience working in industry, R&D institutions and academics. He has established himself as an inspirational leader and communicator with multidisciplinary skills for enabling cross-functional and multicultural teams in industry, R&D and academics. So these are the strong pillars of uh, any country's ecosystem with the systems and this design thinking approach. So these are uh, quite some of the new approaches, the, the systems engineering and the design thinking approach. He has earlier held responsibilities, including those of CEO, vice chancellor, CTO, CEO, CO, sorry, strategic planning, analysis and implementation, institution building and branding. 
so that is that is quite uh, a challenging uh, concept the because everyone might have money might have infrastructure but but branding is something something very challenging infrastructure creation compliance enabling change management so that is that is also very interesting that we we hear in our our daily lives that people people don't tend to change r and d think tank head and skilling he has over 34 years of experience working in india uk japan with international partners in us european union uk germany russia singapore south korea and with the ngos the new team creations and institution building lead to mentoring of hundreds of managers thousands of staff and faculty and enabling over 25000 students he has published over 175 papers in journals and conference proceedings and delivered over 300 plus invited and contributed talks he has been featured in print and visual media in india and abroad he holds four patents filed another 10 patents guided p six phd's and won multiple awards for leadership okay then i i i don't take much much of the time now i invite uh, professor satyanarayan sir please uh, take over the control thank you sir thank you very much for accepting our invite Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharma, for actually uh, inviting me, and also Dr. Jasna, uh, the dean, uh, for also giving me this opportunity to participate in this multi, uh, I mean, institutional, uh, I mean, multi-departmental uh, scheme. So I hope I make some sense and also do justice of saying that today we are in some most exciting times, and uh, and therefore in this exciting time, it is very critical that. we make use of the wonderful opportunity that this country has and uh, which is i think quite remarkable it ne we never had such an opportunity say in the last 50 60 years as we have it now so the essence of my talk today uh, is to convey that we are in a very exciting time we and everybody says make in india does not happen china is way ahead developed world of course has far a large amount of technology but somewhere we forget that actually we have huge amount of capability and even in the most developed world lot of the activity is actually enabled by indians indian students indian professors indian managers and i am sure many of you know many of the global uh, i mean biggest mncs are today headed most leading mncs are headed by indians so we do not have to, but why is it that we are not doing or can we do something is the essence of what i want to convey in this uh, brief talk saying that it's a trillion dollar or even more opportunity and anybody sitting even in an academic institution or in a small medium enterprise or in a, a r&d lab in government can actually make things happen and then as a small i mean startup organization we have set up a vision to say that whatever whether it is a admin service product organization the way we can change is through our philosophy of teach reach and enshrine i will not waste uh, time trying to educate about it because we want to get into the technology that we are teaching and even there i want to highlight that i actually will not really talk about 3d printing or additive manufacturing or various sensors materials technologies embedded system because i am sure over the last one week plus you have spoken about it in detail the essence of what i want to say is how do we through simple approaches integrate them and make things happen in our own campus can i develop a next generation global product sitting in my college i don't even have to be a university because in most other parts of the world it's happening so can we make it happen is what we want to say so the broad overview is why is it exciting for us to talk about additive manufacturing and that especially as india is expected to be a global leader it's very critical and twin that say we talk about this technology and then ourselves because each one would have different passion so i want to know whether my passion whether i am doing biotechnology whether i am doing engineering computer science mechanical engineering civil engineering is my passion linked to this or can i enable something in my domain of activity from hardware to software to materials to even business process so that's what we want to say how it's a huge opportunity and then say how do we i mean irrespective of what is the technology we know how do we approach it and then in a very simple terms say what is additive manufacturing without confusing things and overall then finally show that in the last 7 8 years i have had the privilege or opportunity to work with 
two to three institutions and uh, having worked and in that period we created about 1000 crores of infrastructure working with about 75 companies and making in multiple domains business process product or even government planning policy enabling so i'll just share some of them i'm sorry if i am fast i'll try to be slow i am it's not a two way communication and i know it's going to be very tough uh, but i hope i'm able to carry you along and that not everything i say is nonsense but it also makes some sense and so the essence as i said of my talk is to say we have huge opportunity and additive manufacturing in its all its facets is a trillion dollar opportunity which we can make happen because there are so many facets to it we can take whatever we can and make cutting edge product and solutions and businesses not just for publication or to learn a skill for a job but even to create huge billion dollar companies from our academic system because i just want to emphasize again why it is critical to do in an academic system across the world if you go even to israel ireland singapore let alone korea taiwan australia new zealand america most of the cutting edge technologies are coming from universities who have very limited facility after the proof of concept it becomes a big industries activity so we, the proof of concept depending on the domain is anything from 35% to 50% of a product technology readiness level activity great so therefore we want to talk about it and if i have conveyed this information that it is very simple we need to only understand even our plus 2 level fundamentals of physics chemistry maths or economics and commerce what we studied in school and then our domain irrespective of whether it is biotechnology electronics mechanical embedded system i mean uh, civil engineering industrial production we could actually join with our friends and do cutting edge this is the essence cutting edge technology product process or enable ourselves for a job is what i want to convey this is the essence and as i said you have already discussed too many details so i would rather like to say how is the education system changing why is it exciting to be in education to do cutting edge technology or especially additive manufacturing so whole of our education now in the 21st century education 4.0 believes that actually we need to enable our education should first of all give us knowledge and skills then be able to practice it efficiently and then go into meeting the aspirations of ourselves and our parents then local community needs industry needs and societal needs so because even the knowledge is insufficient i am more involved in the rote learning mechanism used for 18th century clerks and i don't understand after the exam it is like literally doing kunjal in yoga i drink hot water uh, with salt and then i put a lot of hot water put some finger in my mouth and then vomit it out so just like that we get a lot of information vomit it out on the examination paper and forget about it but the 21st century calls for more advanced skills where it says how to leverage your ability to think your ability to communicate your ability to collaborate and more importantly be creative because product and process life cycles are becoming very short so to be creative to adapt and change is the key skill that your education should enable and or in a modified way the education essentially should say ways of working tools for working now most of the time we are at the most looking at tools for working but whatever is repetitive in the age of automation and industry 4.0 will become automated so just knowing a tool of working is no use i should know how to communicate with my colleague i should able to think about this and make use of it effectively and more importantly see that how do i develop product service solution for changing life cycle of people for i mean citizen or overall my career growth so the new mantra of education 4.0 or across is that lifelong learning ability to learn unlearn and relearn is a key requirement and then integrate all of them with a multidisciplinary approach so therefore the additive manufacturing is one example of how multiple domains come together to make something very exciting and uh, i'll not i'm sure you all know that see i mean depending on whose production you go india is going to be 5 to 10 trillion dollars in the next few years and then soon we will have six we already have 600 million people between the age of 15 to 35 and in the lifelong learning 
uh, where when the education is going to be learner centric it is very critical that all these people get educated and therefore the current 30 million 37 million in higher education is soon going to be 150 million people now everybody is educated and again has to keep on changing therefore it's very critical that we learn we practice it in our education so that is what is i mean the, that practicing should give us the excitement to do new things and additive manufacturing offers that unique opportunity and indian education system itself is about a 220 billion opportunity and as we go along we'll see that there are a lot more opportunities in industry and more importantly now we are in an entirely new changed paradigm. The whole world is looking for alternatives for everything. So can we leverage this opportunity and move forward? I'll not talk too much about the uh, new education draft policy as to why we should be talking about it. It expects that we will either have independent universities which are doing uh, I mean, everything on their own or we will have I mean, multidisciplinary educational institutions and there will be not any more standalone colleges. And therefore, every college has to prepare for itself to be at the level of a university or in the process of being a knowledge creator, knowledge, I mean, developing knowledge comprehension and also dissemination or advocacy of knowledge. And that's where, as I said, additive manufacturing is giving more than a trillion dollar opportunity. And just another few minutes on the excitement as to why we have to talk. See, India for the last thousand years plus was always a global leader in economy, in materials, in production, in product and process. Just for a small period between about say 1930 to 1990, we were laggards. But once again, from 1990 or 2000 onwards, we are again within the top five in terms of purchasing power parity as a leader. And by 1940, 50, sorry, 2040 or 50, we are expected to be a global leader and be anything from 10 trillion to a 40 trillion economy. And in that economy, services and new technologies, their additive manufacturing has a huge role to play is expected to be about a 10 trillion opportunity. So 10 trillion opportunity in service and making materials, products, service, whether it's for computing, whether it is for manufacturing, whether it is for energy, whether it is for, I mean, say an aircraft or a wearable electronics, everywhere additive manufacturing is going to have a huge robotics and all that and internet of things. So therefore it is very apt that say you have had a whole week of discussion on various aspects of material process technology manufacturing and how do we link all of them today in the valedictory we want to say how do we link because you see already without doing any key global technology we have 19 unicorns just in service and over 500 globe i mean uh, companies are doing research in india so now how do we take this, this opportunity forward and again the opportunities in every area I mean, whether you are looking at agriculture, health, financial services, digital marketing, I mean, uh, urban development, poverty elevation, water, environment, manufacturing, everywhere you have opportunity. And as I said, all this opportunity, 25% is going to be manufacturing. And all that manufacturing is going to be automated. Industry 4.0 enabled smart manufacturing with new materials, new devices, newer process. And not everything needs to be imported. And that is where can we become innovative. So India is already ranked today 52nd globally in an innovation index, ease of and many other parameters from ease of index to sustainability. We are moving very forward. So how do we leverage all of them? For example, Indian innovation system and startup ecosystem is changing rapidly. We had about 193 funding of 3.2 billion. I mean, uh, la last year. And uh, so you see that, I mean, a ink, the small minimum size of funding was as big as 5 million. And FinTech and many, many companies have already come, but we expect more to happen in future and not necessarily in tier one cities, but even in other cities. And therefore it is very critical. We look at some of this opportunity. I will not waste time on talking all of this because we want to come to additive manufacturing, but to just say that, as I said in the beginning, when across the board so many technologies happen, we have contributed very minimally to innovation. And our academic, even for institutions and universities, for example, in 2018, US universities generated close to $3 billion just in royalty and technology licensing. 
and that is equal to all of higher education government budget of India. Why? That is why we need to now look at leveraging our knowledge, our skills, and see how do we now leapfrog. As I said earlier, our own people are being enabling everywhere. Countries like Israel and Ireland and Taiwan are global leaders and Singapore in innovation and Switzerland. And they hardly have few millions of people and few universities. How is it that they can do it and multinationals buy that? And why are we not doing it and only doing servicing? Is what and we will not go into all this opportunity of education. But the key is today we are in the age of communication. Everything now, I mean, say broadband has literally come into our hand, mobile. Anything and everything can be controlled and every domain i say even starting from as simple as agriculture is expected to grow exponentially and because we are talking of additive manufacturing as i said i want to show application if you look at from tractor to automobiles to harvesting to sowing to reaping to post harvesting processes every technology these are billion dollar opportunity happening and this will need additive manufacturing at every stage and similarly, I mean, the whole world is looking at sustainable development. So again, all of the sustainable development you see, it is bringing everything, education, industry, finance, showing that everything is multidisciplinary. Or in general, I want to say, forget about sustainable development. We, as the most privileged people in the academic institutions, I believe, one in a million already in the nation of close to 1370 million people people getting higher education or professional education are one in 10000 and in better institutions it will be one in a million or one in 10 uh, uh, 10 million so if we have said one in a lakh or one in a million so we are already unique so it is up to us to create a transformation in this country because there is so much of opportunity in every domain. And I say the opportunity is in everything. Roti, Kapra, Makan, Urchas, uh, or uh, Sampar. That's all. And in all of this, we can do so much of change. So can we make use of this opportunity, whether it is in production, whether it is in R&D, every area, and all of them together lead to product and solution. <coughs> And therefore, and additive manufacturing, again, is one such example of bringing all parameters together for every domain. And as I mentioned earlier, multiple projections say India is going to be an outperformer, even though we have COVID. And COVID has actually given more opportunity for India to be an outperformer in the sense that you see so many industries we are growing to grow two times, 10 times, 20 times. So these are, and if this opportunity has to be leveraged, we should be in a position to leverage what we study, use it to implement products, services, solution, or even develop new solutions relevant to us. I mean, I don't mind saying this every time, wherever I go. I mean, we all know that we use missed call to talk to our friend saying I have reached because I have already paid 10 rupees or 50 rupees as a prepaid card. India is the only country where even now 90% people have prepaid. We already pay before using all the money and then use it and when it is over, pay again. Everywhere else it is 90% is postpaid and 10 percent might be prepaid. So having paid, now I want to make sure I have reached a movie theater, I have reached a seminar, I have reached, I would send a missed call. And nowadays, of course, WhatsApp and all that has come, it's easier. But even before WhatsApp came, we sent a missed call. And on an average, when today we have a billion people with mobile connections, I mean, a company like Airtel needs to do maybe 10, I mean, say 5 billion, 10 billion, 20 billion calls. And which missed call is important, we do not know. So to account for the missed call, companies like IBM have $100 million business with Airtel alone. Therefore, even so many innovation opportunities come up. And therefore, we need to make sure, how do we look at this? And so um, the COVID, as I said, is now because there are issues with China and also people are looking for alternate, alternate supplies, so many more opportunities to come up. Every industry, whether it is aviation, uh, whether it is, I mean, all sorts of, uh, we have close now, we'll be moving to 100 million MSMEs. So that is where I want to say every one of, and most of the regular jobs will be automated. Big companies, when they import technology, will buy automated machine, lesser people for job. But then many more services, many more new opportunities are coming up. And so uh, we will soon have 100 million MSMEs. So that is where I think if I can leverage my education well, link it to my passion, 
make something, learn how to use my knowledge of English, chemistry, physics, electrical, mechanical, embedded system to whatever, to make product and service, the opportunity is huge. For example, this is an area which is a key area. You might have read mostly about 3D printing as making aircrafts or heart implant, but all electronics is going to be on glass, paper, plastic, ceramic, textile. This is all actually additive manufacturing. On any substrate, or you are going to produce multi-layered, screen printed, inkjet printed, plasma process based materials to create additive manufacturing and then devices and structures. So it's very, the additive manufacturing therefore is an exciting thing. It is like saying, I do not know how many of you, okay, we'll just uh, come to that. Or see, you build electronics, materials, or even houses together and build sensors into it to monitor them. That's called integrate, structural integrated systems where electrical, mechanical, electronics, computers all come together, whether it's a stretchable electronics, whether it's my artificial eye, whether it's an aircraft with everything on its surface or a building. So medical instrumentation, I mean, all sorts of technologies are coming or you see these are all already 3d printed houses and new materials which are so exciting generated by this multi-layer so essentially we are looking why are we talking of additive manufacturing is that we are trying to create new materials with multiple functionality i mean i earlier know that if i have to have a reflection i should only put a metal to reflect a silver or aluminium it gets oxidized and tarnished today i could put various oxides on glass and again create a reflection which is as good as a mirror with some other metal which doesn't tarnish with a minimal layer by using multiple internal reflection so multiple functionalities multiple <coughs> features and as you say a lightweight structure floating on water but strong, stronger than steel uh, um, is that our multi-storied buildings have already been built using additive manufacturing or you want to call it 3D printing. So because you have prefabricated structures or you directly pour concrete and systems directly on, I mean, um, uh, reinforcing systems and products and systems can happen. Therefore, and then they will be connected with electronics, even the electronics is built into it. Therefore, that is also additive. You don't build a separate sensor, but you do electronic with screen printing, inject printing on that wall. So that is also enabled and then you control it from anywhere. So it's called internet of things and the whole ecosystem. So our aircrafts, defense requirements, or even wearable electronics, as I said, so many and the whole of smart city needs many new products and enablers enabled by, because they have to be custom designed. So additive manufacturing becomes very critical. And this is just to show that whatever we do, we need to have a roadmap. We need to have some planning. So within the institute, within the state, within the country, we have to have, for it's like saying, I already, I always say two, I mean, a Japanese was going along with some Indians in a train. Every time a train stopped in a station, he said, oh, the train is late by 15 minutes, 20 minutes. He was scripting. I was feeling a bit uncomfortable. He said, oh, it's already late by two hours. By the time he traveled, started from, uh, say, uh, Delhi and wanted to reach Chennai or Bangalore. He said, it's already halfway through by Nagpur. We are we're three hours late. And next station, again late. So he said to him, why is it that you even have a timetable if we are going to be so late? The Indian slowly said, sir, because we have a timetable, I at least know I am two hours late. If I do not even have a timetable, how will I know whether I'm arriving on time or ahead of time? So in that way, therefore, it is very critical. We build a roadmap of what we want to do, how all technologies can come in. And one example of that is this Japanese roadmap in 1991, carbon nanotube was discovered. And they built based on the carbon nanotube and its properties, they analyzed and predicted what all could happen. And having done that, they now every stage they have gone ahead of the curve. They have been able. So we need to, therefore, we need to talk of such multidisciplinary activities. I mean, uh, to work together. For example, here is another domain called say vacuum nanoelectronics. I could build electrical propulsion for a satellite. An X-ray source through a catheter can go into my heart or anywhere in my body and deliver X-ray. Or I could build biosensors. For I mean, DNA and antigen sense, embed it into the a small nanoparticle, or even control it with an external electronics. Or similarly, I could do environment cleaning. So all of them are today actually leveraging additive manufacturing. To, so the opportunities from aerospace to defense everywhere it is huge, and many new materials are being identified. So I want to say, please. We need to relook at whole of our material science. Earlier, it used to be either crystalline or powder, but then you today have anything from, if you just take carbon, you could have amorphous carbon, 
you could have nano nano cluster carbon then nano diamond carbon then you could have microcrystalline polycrystalline crystalline so with each property change we can do a lot of innovative things this is one of the equipment i developed for 1 meter carbon layers to be grown at room temperature uh, which is as strong as diamond and so this is again showing other flexible electronics and so everywhere as we said industry 4.0 is calling for multidisciplinary effort for sheer lack of time we i will not be able to talk more about this but maybe later we would look at so it calls for industry academy r and d everybody coming together from fundamental research and therefore it is very critical let's say we make sure we make use of this opportunity to become leaders in this uh, domain so it can uh, anything you will see in this let's see right from a beginner can engage in design and concept strength of material fundamentals and again the strength of material could be a biological material a chemical material and it can be steel or it can be concrete because today all materials are used and you are as i said in earlier leveraging material technology hereafter to invent design and fabricate new material with new properties new system and therefore it's a multidisciplinary area for all domains from foundation to master level to come together and work and develop products and solution and uh, as i said big data analytics is a huge opportunity and all this material data that comes up can also lead to help you find solutions and they as i said in many the sustainable activities are happening and as i um, um, this is just to say how much in each domain big data or even surface engineering is a uh, additive manufacturing technology you just grow a new material on say steel the steel will not get oxidized you grow a new carbon layer on plastic the plastic becomes biocompatible you grow a new layer on say a ceramic it becomes a mirror or you grow a new layer or one or two layers on i mean a glass and it becomes a reflector of high energy high power laser light the glass itself so this is a surface this is also a sort of additive manufacturing which is supposed to enable 10 to 20% of every product if it is built in by design but if it is added later it costs 40% so and this we could literally do from screen printing inkjet printing to simple plasma process which can be built in your own local labs therefore and technology could be as we said flexible and uh, large area electronics where additive manufacturing can be offset printing rotary screen printing graveyard printing and multiple such technologies are to becoming part of today i mean additive manufacturing which you may not even learn because you will only see some one aspect but so many ways of additive manufacturing are coming up and therefore we need to keep our eyes and ears open this is showing how we could do printed electronics uh, on glass paper plastic ceramic textile and uh, this is all additive because you simply take a surface on the top of it you build layers so therefore i am mean, i am as you see internet is enabling so many aspects and many of this use and throw wearable electronics are all done through additive manufacturing every domain is impacted and more sensors are being made this is just to say how is the opportunity if i just look at flexible electronics this is the type of billions of dollars of opportunity whereas we are only talking of 1 trillion therefore can we now open up energy again huge opportunity for clean energy products not for solar power plants but putting energy for my watch energy for my wearable sensor pacemaker energy for my i mean by uh, biosensor patch which will deliver insulin into my body or energy for telling whether my heartbeat is okay to my doctor so there was my energy harvesting energy um, uh, i mean scavenging or off grid power is again a huge and all that is predominantly leveraged actually by uh, i mean uh, say printed electronics and as we say so many more products we have discussed and the whole of india is evolving and how do we this if you can i'm sure if you can look at this uh, lay you see some green layer light green yellow and orange you see how you build energy generators energy storing system driving electronics sensors or even a mems structures which would start working one upon another so this is another way of is not it additive manufacturing just does not mean using a laser or a, a sintering process to develop a new alloy or a component but it means complete systems can be actually built through additive manufacturing so therefore i mean I, if you just look at electronics is a good example i want to say if we have to build a i mean say we it is like say we it's we cannot like building electronics uh, products 
is like saying that i mean say you have a whole mountain and from the mountain you cut things and then make small components top down whereas alternatively the new additive manufacturing is like building things bottom up i can build a taj mahal i can build a huge temple i can build 100 story building starting one brick at a time one material at a time so that is what is additive manufacturing building bottom up for design from our own choice of materials so the key enabler for whole of this additive manufacturing is materials atoms molecules structure as i said you could have amorphous materials nano crystalline materials polycrystalline materials we will not go into all the physics of it but the thing is <coughs> using this today whole of new enabling of designer material for any application which is environment friendly which is more stronger more flexible all things can happen whereas conventional processing if i are doing even a manufacturing you had things like casting forging forming extrusion all these technologies were there but then i mean say they have all evolved but then they are all high energy consuming more difficult but that is where the new additive manufacturing technologies make it very exciting that you can bring atoms together or you can make a solution or you can they have a material just melt it on a surface and make it link to something so and the dimensions when we therefore by controlling atoms and molecule from 1 or 2 nanometer to hundreds of microns we create various materials if my material cluster dimension is sort of approximately 1 to 2 nanometer i am dealing with amorphous material if i am dealing a few tens of nanometers to 100 nanometer we are dealing with nano materials if you are dealing over 200 to a few hundreds of micron it is micro crystalline from a few hundred micron to millimeters if we have material structured ordered structure it is called polycrystalline but if it is completely crystalline then over a few cent millimeters the material has the same structure same property we say we are dealing with uh, crystalline and today the material technology in additive manufacturing enables us therefore to create materials from a few layers of atoms to uh, 100 story building in uh, in either using thin film or something called thick film process and uh, that is you have a material already prepared like a concrete you simply pour it into the reinforced structure and you get a i mean a wall or a window or a structure that is called thick film or you bring in a plastic wire melt it and make it layer by layer you are again sort of using multi layer thick film because the material composition is already ready and creating additive manufacturing alternatively if you bring atoms and molecules together and make them stick on to something and create a new material then you are dealing with thin film so we'll not bore you with all of this but just to say that new atoms new molecule being created either used as a free formulated solution and then uh, i mean uh, uh, sort of make new materials or you even bring atoms and molecules together like i mean i'll not go into too much of detail for lack of time but you bring atoms and molecules together collect them cohesively and then you can make all sorts of materials and the material could be done with many processes and all this process beyond what you might have discussed earlier like physical vapor deposit or all also used in additive manufacturing so i don't want to bore you with too many names but the key point i want to convey is therefore additive manufacturing does not mean some laser sintering heavy technology equipment only imported from germany or england or america but then there are many many processes from simple screen printing inkjet printing or even dipping into a solution and taking out i can create new material and that new material can be used for wide range of application from electronics to house construction and various new properties can be created out of it and these properties as we said based on the may number of atom clusters would change way on the surface wall that is why we say it's from nanotechnology to wall together but it's the most exciting time and additive manufacturing in principle using this various process technologies today gives us unlimited opportunity so if i have complained conveyed this information i think that is the essence of what i want to convey as to why you should be talking about from irrespective of your department as i said from computer science to electronics mechanical to biotechnology medical doctor to engineers or even as i mean businessman should be looking at additive manufacturing from their own area of interest because it gives us the ability to today design and engineer and become god with respect to making materials for any application and uh, so therefore many other technologies which go into additive manufacturing include as i said screen printing inkjet printing where you can do roll to roll meters 
dimensions from micron to millimeters and meters manufacturing or build an a sensor or a motor or an electronic circuit from medical implants to i mean aerospace application on any substrate including silicon at 100 nanometer dimension so therefore all these are sort of various ways of additive manufacturing we will not bore you with them but just suffice to say that and it can be any material even live cells human cells to organic and inorganic materials are used and this is again example of advanced hybrid additive manufacturing so most of the conventional manufacturing was subtractive or deductive manufacturing that is like saying you take more himalaya mountain and then cut it into small small features and structures or it is like building a statue out of a big stone you cut so many things whereas building taj mahal you build one brick at a time and you can build a taj mahal you can build a small house you can build i mean a 30 story multi story building and you use different materials depending on how you want to mix them so therefore the future of manufacturing is a hybrid of additive and subtractive manufacturing here again we have just tentatively showed like say how some of them are combined together but the key point is for this to happen everybody has to come together multiple technologies multiple domains for every region of application have to come together for additive manufacturing and it's an exciting journey that we and it's lot more to come and therefore we don't have to worry if somebody has already done something now what is the approach to enable it in a simple way can we do something is next 10 minutes 15 minutes i would like to uh, highlight and show so that because i think we started around uh, uh, sort of uh, 10 uh, 15 we'll finish by 11 10 or so and then have discussion is to say how do we approach this can we in our own education system because it's so exciting billions of dollars of opportunity opportunity in every domain how do we do this is a huge challenge and that's what we want to say and that is the whole point is today every domain as you have seen from heart implants to aircraft propulsions to i mean x-ray sources to multi-story building are leveraging multidisciplinary approach therefore we cannot be standalone and so oh, i am a computer scientist i only know programming oh i am biotechnologist i can only do this testing to say whether this i mean uh, dna exists or not or i can do a pcr to test whether from the small amount of uh, solution whether it, actually there is this particular uh, i mean uh, dna or whatever which is passing or antibodies exist or not but then i have to understand we have to and bring everything together and i am sure you all know that's it for example malaria is a huge i um, mean problem even now and the developed world did not have it. Therefore, in the countries like India had to suffer. So a mechanical engineering professor in MIT, what he did was, I mean, he was talking to his friend over a, tea, a cup of coffee and the friend said, you see, well, how does malaria happen? He said, you see, a normal human blood cell of uh, three to four micron size, when it gets malaria becomes inelastic and becomes seven to eight micron. And it doesn't lose its, it, it is now inelastic. This was the concept. So what did this professor do? He built a small funnel in micro dimension, a huge opening with say tens of hundreds of micron where he could put a few picoliters or nanoliters of solution. And then a channel which was say less than four micron because a good blood cell, which is not infected by malaria will simply because of elasticity will adjust itself and flow through the channel. Whereas a inelastic malaria affected, uh, I mean, uh, cell will not go through and it will stick at the neck of the uh, funnel and see it's and then you could see it now because it is five six micron you can actually see with a mobile phone so he said instantaneously even say 15 20 days before my malaria aggravates i mean i could find malaria and therefore this is now a whole of mechanical engineering inelasticity molecular electronics molecular i mean biochemistry biomolecule activity and image processing signal processing all brought together to identify malaria molecule Therefore, now how it can only everywhere, even from aerospace, it's all happening. Everywhere to enhance efficiency, we are doing biomimicking because our human body is very sensitive. We are trying to mimic our body's capability to have more efficient sensors, more controllers everywhere. So therefore, it's again, as I said, all domains are calling for multidisciplinary activity and that multidisciplinary activity can only happen when we start working together. And it cannot be like blind men looking at an elephant, but all of them, whatever they see, they have to bring together and therefore find out what is the effective, I mean, shape or size of the elephant. And uh, therefore, it's a huge opportunity. Can we put this as a process or plan in our academic system? A head of an institution joins with other faculty and say, what is your interest? See, we all want to do 
in our university or college, all of this. How do we bring everybody's interest to one, two, three aspects of local? The rest you do your own choice of research. But at least for five things, can we work together? 10 or 15 percent of my time. And then, therefore, this calls for a transformative outlook. I mean, it cannot be business as usual and the whole everybody is saying the world is going to be different. So I want to call this as the device for enabling systematic and sustainable innovation in any environment. So in a, first of all, if something has to be done, first we have to see, is there an effective feasibility for making, I mean, that is where the science and technology comes in. Once it is feasible, then I want to see that it does not harm my environment. I have to see, is it sustainable? Now, once it is sustainable to become a product or a solution or a service, we have to look at the economics of it and viability. That's also great. But then see, host of the current products, solutions, for everything were done for the rich man in the developed world. Therefore, even now, a common man sometimes cannot afford some of the solution. But then today, in a sustainable, inclusive world, we want to see how do I make it inclusive? How do I make it affordable to the common man? So that, I mean, because I'm sure everybody knows the Hindustan leaders of the world and Procter and & Gamble all had reasonable small market, but they were not expanding. And uh, when, I mean, Professor Prahala said, bottom of the pyramid or base of the pyramid, you approach them with smaller packets, one rupee, two rupee, I mean, say, uh, use and throw coffee powder to say, shampoo, to oil, or a five rupee biscuit packet rather than doing 10 kg. And suddenly, I mean, the MNCs and even Indian small companies could locally now address them with packaging and all technology. Let's see, now India became a huge market. And everybody became built, their businesses expanded exponentially. So inclusivity, both for enabling the common man and for higher market is very critical. So do we see that whatever we do is there inclusivity? And above all, even if it is inclusive, Tata Nano was built. But somehow, because for some reason, with all good intention, Mr. Tata said it is for the poor man. Nobody bought Tata Nano. Some of the technologies developed for Tata Nano is today used in BMW and Mercedes Benz. But Tata Nano is being closed. If he had simply said it is the most energy efficient, I mean, luxurious car uh, uh, at the lowest cost. I mean, luxurious car one could have for the developed world and sustainable development. Maybe first Europeans would have bought and then everybody here would have also bought the Tata Nano. And it would have been, and it would have had more improvement because nobody bought, they couldn't do. But the, some of the new patents that they developed is part of Mercedes-Benz and BMW. So therefore, desirability, inclusivity, viability, sustainability, and effective feasibility has to be built in as a system and design thinking from the initial stage of a project or a product. So can, and that is where we see how each of our departments can come to do one of this aspect. I don't have to do everything. And can we do this through every assignment, every project, so that a cutting edge product can possibly happen in my department. So I call this as device to enable sustainable innovation. And it is applicable for, as I said, any product, any service, but it calls for cross-functional, multifunctional, cross-cultural teams, creativeness and adaptiveness and inventiveness to coming together. And then sky is the limit for the opportunity of an education system. And as we said, build a huge process, make it modularized, small, small subsystems where I don't have to worry about the other, but just make it happen. And then we look at integrating, but with the system and design thinking. And this, we want it to be incorporated into our education so that, I mean, it becomes exciting. Our, normal, our education should not be boring. The experiential learning. So you see a kid, you give it a toy. It, you don't have to explain anything. It will uh, soon understand. Even I don't know how to handle my mobile very well, but I just bring a mobile. My son or a daughter looks at it and they give me all the information. If I don't know, I talk, I talk, ask my daughter, please help me. How do I work with this? And immediately she says, oh, this is this. Or even, for example, I had a problem of communication with a wireless, uh, I mean, earphone. She just do set it up in one minute for my, I mean, say this come, uh, my, um, conference. Therefore, it, the people... When they enjoy something, they learn faster. And then you give them the fundamental, they will understand better. So start very early. And therefore, I say, please use this principle. In the very first semester, all fundamental subjects and link it to the most advanced and exciting products or processes that the class is interested. Say how even English, is because your class has people from all areas. So we are teaching you English so that you can communicate better with your team. And then make them do things, experiential learning. And then you will see that they will discover and get excited in the very first semester. Then they would, or in the very first stage of study, the next stage, when they do more fundamentals, they will understand how to design it. 
and as they go higher they will fine tune and use better tools to make full products and system so i call this as the joy of learning joy of engineering or joy of innovation through a multidisciplinary learning with a simple approach of saying looking at device for any product and service and this is what i think uh, chanakya said siddhir bhushyati vidya the crowning of knowledge or information is application ability to use it effectively the same thing i mean confucius said i hear i forget i see i remember i do i understand so therefore can we bring this and i want to say we can do it irrespective of whether i am a college whether i am a university whether i am an msc i mean a small msme small company if i can use the simple principle of i call them as a pancha indriya five i principle every first i get the information try to understand it from the information understanding i try to delve, then questions will come that's inquiry will happen when i try to understand or i am making effort and from the inquiry and one i get further understanding suddenly i get new ideas inspire innovate or you know okay it happen and then i say how do i implement it with others because i don't know everything i work with my colleagues i work with my fellow student i have a roommate who is from economics or commerce i say please look at the business feasibility i have somebody from biotechnology because i am from electronics i say how can i apply it because i wanted to be a doctor my father forced me to be an electronics engineer can you please help me how does this help to this medical domain because you are a biotechnologist and then whatever you do please put system and design thinking into it and look at the impact i mean sustainability in terms of environment sustainability in terms of return on investment sustainability in terms of enabling more people to be prepared to take this for opportunity forward and it's huge and therefore as this just to say that if you are looking at an la my today electrical mobility so many technologies come together it's a multidisciplinary approach and uh, therefore th the same five by principle you could also if i am talking of innovation process you would call it as a discover design and develop for sheer lack of time i'll not go forward now i'll just take four to five minutes to show examples of how this has happened in last eight years alone from india's first pico satellite to an uav you see the uh, which was i mean sort of uh, um, certified as the best in the world from nasa to a solar car which ran a Uh, i mean uh, say the 3000 km rally first indian solar car in australia student projects started with no money just first semester assignment led to products which one and for example this student satellite india's first pico satellite from a private engineering colleges five of them working together won an award in uh, glasgow in uh, england and therefore it's saying that we can do wonderful things in one to two or three years with integrated planning and this my as sorry for sheer lack of time i could not explain the processes and similarly for example business process we work with student assignments and projects over say about 200 companies and enabled over 100 million activity including policy enabling for say jan aushadi or i mean um, what could be the matrices for metro rail if we have to build in more cities because most of the parts of the world metro rail is only done between city and suburb an area where the distances are 60 70 100 kilometers here every 1 kilometer the train has to stop 1.5 kilometer then what is it economically viable how do you not disrupt the busy town or a village or lose lo not lose the local architectural flavor and the local business and yet connect them across the city and therefore viability may new matrices were to be evolved so these are saying just your business process solutions work with 150 60 companies in last 7 years these were the earlier image or for example just the one car now second version has come it has technologies from electrical mobility to driverless car built into it and over as i said 50 companies contributed to it and from just a total 15 20 lakh investment from the college uh, from design to the by the time the car was running we had a 5 crore budget from companies putting in cost and kind support so it's a question for us to say how do we make this happen for example this is a complete i mean facility for additive manufacturing or uh, electronics on glass paper plastic built in both rv college of engineering and bml munjal university by me in one two years a similar facility of course with some about 1000 crores but took over few 10 to 12 years in iit iisc but we built it everything with local so that if anything stops kuch kharab ho gaya local mechanic ko bulaya theek kare unko sabhi ko sikhana pada lekin it was just we designed and within our faculty and say made these things happen now electronics of next generation on glass paper plastic can happen this is saying how these are many many additive manufacturing technology equipments that we have built here from indian companies and these can do coating over meters together 3d products as you can see and we can do even new materials for example i am not sure if you can see this uh, i mean it's a 
there is an induction uh, heating uh, based uh, equipment where at very low temperature under vacuum you can even bring plastic and ceramics together you can bring ceramics and metals together and make a i mean a rod and then extrude it to do additive manufacturing or you could build new composites new materials and then use it for 3d printing so these are the type of cap and all these equipments are made here in india locally at 1 by 10th to 1 by 50th cost of an imported equipment with provision for more automation more control even nano materials grown from room temperature at room temperature from atomic smooth films to clusters and fibers this just is and even nano patterns generated for electronic circuit of 100 by 200 nanometer about 15000 patterns on 100 by 100 micron and all this with just a, 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 a ultrasonic bath spinner spray technologies and they, you can put electrical propulsion to i mean scr sirs sensors for uh, i mean uh, like um, hiv or i mean ebola and all such things can be done with these type of sensors or even future photonics electronics or for example this is a multi discipline um, multi domain equipment where you can do invent any material in this equipment using a couple of uh, processes and it can be again up to a meter level we made i am sure if i'm not, sorry we made 1 meter long solar thermal receiver tubes which can stand 600 degree out of this i'll just this just to say new instrumentations were developed all with student and faculty working together a light which bulb uh, works at lesser energy than led and can work like a crt for 10 years without failing so this is just to say so many things can happen and from the very first year we excite students into all of this manufacturing by introducing this as part of example of i mean physics chemistry mechanics electrical engineering engineering drawing i mean electronics energy efficiency and from there i mean they build complete products and systems from iot to building car or even a drilling milling process we put a tachometer an energy dynamometer and all that and, and vibration meter get this data and for the local company we do the they give the basic raw material so i don't buy raw material and from this process and from the data analysis we are able to tell how to optimize the process or automate the process from the manual for a local msme so this is how maybe this just to show say various examples of product and process this is an energy harvesting sensor i mean just now i mean uh, my phd student has uh, delivered we did projects for four companies in this which is from electrical electrodes from ecg eee to energy generation from a carpet on the floor for another a huge global electronic giant so and or medical instrumentation a smart a stethoscope which can do things of so many other instruments within uh, of course the initial product was big but this whole thing can be encapsulated into a very small or even developing i mean tools for surgery practicing surgery sitting anywhere so this is just to say that opportunities sky is the limit or this is for example a complete center for printable electronics or additive manufacturing being set up in uh, say iit kanpur and they have developed various nano materials also there and similarly we have used some of this technology to create sustainable campuses in every champ institution that i worked in 2 to 3 years we have created sustainable campus in energy water and waste management and again biology exp biotech experiments environment experiment chemistry civil electronics mechanical and computer science came together to create sustainable campuses and so that it even led to migratory birds coming into our campus so the key point i want to convey as i conclude i mean i'm sort of just about one hour i was told it was one hour and i'm sorry i started late so every product or process development you start from a university most of the concepts happen there work with local companies they evolve into proof of working man uh, concept products and from there you work with industry and that leads to development of complete product process and then manufacturing and there it, this calls for all domain people coming and working together and it needs private and public partnership it can never happen that is why even our for, uh, in spite of all the money even iit iisc all of them put together see exceptionally knowledgeable scientists great students they go to any other part of the world do wonderful things but then this uh, in india we cannot name five or 10 products to have come out of all of our education system but today if we can look at this with a simple approach of multidisciplinary approach and as bringing system and design thinking together 
as i showed we in last 8 years worked with about 300 companies 75 companies invested close to 300 crores in the institution that i headed and of course i had to request all my friends and it's all only bringing whatever they like no never force anybody it has to be by choice and students got excited and they have all started new companies we have built new products and then today we have created an ecosystem for next generation disruptive technology just in this two colleges most people may not know it does not have a brand but already the technology exists or whoever did that already is working in best of companies or best of universities across the globe nothing stops any college or any student to look at this multidisciplinary approach and work with a local company or find a solution for their local issues then sky is the limit for example you see here again global uh, semiconductor is a, a huge in one of today's leading semiconductor manufacturing company so you see from material processes device architecture design technology i mean focus even for uh, see ma managing of the things to sales they work with multidisciplinary local teams and global teams seek i mean seamlessly work together and therefore they are able to from with a systems approach from the design stage to the sustainability end of the life cycle everything is interlinked so that nowhere do you get a problem so anything we do if we bring the system and design thinking even in msme for example i didn't show here but in some of the process equipment we have developed technology where sensors can be manufactured electronic sensors with circuit i mean but those dimensions will be in just microns and millimeter in an msme in india with all indian equipment Uh, if they are willing to do it, so that is the way. We, this is just to show that just like in Israel or Taiwan or Singapore, we could or Ireland, we can make things happen. So, what, irrespective of what you are working, services, product, domain, can you please bring in this idea of pancha indriyas or the five senses or the five eyes for education? And if you use them, you will be able to work on any product, process, or service. That is. whenever you get an information thorough it steadily and when you understand thorough it and start understanding or even if you partially understand it should lead to inquiry and questions when you look for answer to that inquiry you will see get more insight than what the information gives and that is what is big data analytics actually and then from that insight now if you are getting a new idea inspiration ideation innovation please make that happen now proof of concept as i said in any domain you typically whether it is aircraft whether it is a ship whether it's a medical instrumentation you say trl levels technology readiness levels these way if you say it's a, for any domain it can be anything from trl level of 8 9 10 12 or 15 so the proof of concept irrespective of the domain can be anything from 35 to 50% and then from there to the product is the next anything 60 to 50 i mean say 65% to 50% or 45% so all this can happen only when we work together so can you please put these questions into anything that you want to do whether you want to study has this all happened so then i am i ready for exam exam or has this happened so am i ready to develop a product or is my even course ready so that my student will be up, uh, interested and excited about this and then from the output of that i because we are in outcome based education i mean now it is no more education or content delivery but it's actually learning understanding and using so having done this we in my assessment as a teacher or in my assessment of a product process or solution did it first lead to curiosity and from that curiosity was their critical thinking have i understood it well so i call them as the nava kavach or the nine shields which will enable me to deliver a product service or be employable or be a communicator whatever so have i understood enough with critical thinking that i can communicate it well and to do the unknown things from my side collaborate with something cumulatively in our collaboration can we do the creative thinking and then in this we cannot be complacent we have to be ready for change continuously we have to be improving even if i put initially some specification as i do development can i keep changing the specification continuous adaptation and then overall i never say oh i know everything and so we are satisfied no complacency or not we oh content okay my professor banunga mujhe nahi karna hai acha sat number aa gaya mujhe aur kuch nahi karna never be content i mean be anxious or be i mean uh, well, one i think it was uh, andrew grow the intel ceo he said only the paranoid survive so you have to have that excitement and that bubbling nature inside or for example talking today unfortunately i am not 
meeting people but i had butterflies even before i was started to talk to say can i convey so many multidisciplinary systems together i don't know if i have done or not but at least now i am on any end of it uh, but i think i have said something right and maybe everybody would have understood some aspect of it if not everything and therefore no complacency or contentment and above all see that how do all domains converge to deliver meaningful solution so this is i think what additive manufacturing offers with as i said from materials from processes from programming to control to sensors to i mean everything i mean every even business opportunity therefore it's a multidisciplinary opportunity any domain people can come in and so many things are changing in this new sustainable world development or progress see we are going to move to if you will we put 17 sustainable development if i look at health it says prognostic health care it means before i get a illness i should know i will get an illness and i will take something medicine more importantly we want to go to prognostic food food as a medicine because even the way i take food and the process i do cooking i want to be sure it is healthy food nutritious food that i will not even get a health issue even before taking medicine so or similarly in everything so it's if i am building a building or a machine i want to do prognostic integrated structural health monitoring there is build sensors and process into it that even with a slight small change in vibration or a noise of the drilling or milling i know that my tool has become blunt so i cannot get now 10 micron precision but my product will become 15 micron so i have to stop this and change a tool or if i'm doing i mean a medical a implant i should know see this is biocompatible this is not compatible so this a, the lay, the structure needed for this biocompatibility is 2 nanometer my tool should tell me okay you have to stop your production here because this already reached the surface roughness so that is where you bring in all domains of activity together and it's an exciting time to be in education and never i think in the last 70 80 years we had so much of opportunity to do even a small thing and see that it changes the whole world or impact the world so therefore and additive manufacturing as i said is a key enabler i would say is a major enabler of most of these changes happening whether it is in textile whether it is in electronics whether it is in house construction whether it is in machine building whether it is in aircraft whether it is in a car everywhere i mean this has going to implant and uh, it, the opportunities as i said is unlimited it's mind blowing or it's the only limit is our imagination and therefore if you could leverage this it is unlimited opportunities and you we all can be involved in make in india as i said for so far the india progress without our support but this is for once a unique opportunity to make things happen i am uh, very sorry we have not been able to communicate directly and also we started slightly late i just stop this i think we are sort of exactly 1 uh, hour 3 4 minutes more i'll stop it here and uh, happy to take any questions and hope it was uh, informative and exciting enough for all of you to look at or at least trigger something in your mind uh, that's a, the key point i again want to conclude is to say that see you all have to just remember whatever your area of work there is huge opportunity but you need to collaborate with your friends in other domain and even if you are in the smallest msme company or in uni or college which has as minimum there are so many free tools at least nothing should stop us from designing and simulation once we have done that i say that suppose somebody says i should do a nanometer uh, na nanolith imprint lithography i say okay instead of doing nano imprint i could even use a needle and a syringe and in the syringe i can still do today 200 micron dot so can i start with a syringe and a needle and make a solution and do that with the dot and make a device additive device and from there i mean say can i move forward so if i understand it well i don't have to have any system i can use simple fundamentals and start working and then from the proof of concept then go on refining i mean the, 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 as they say rome was not built in one day things will happen but then understanding fundamentals trying to use them to make things happen with whatever you have that is the initial experiential learning even if it is thought exercise with simulation and then as a, and let it be every assignment every semester you actually should plan for one product in for a given class with the subjects that they have or a one solution or one aspect of a solution with the bigger product in mind every one of us could be innovators inventors and we could be as i said if india has taken 70 years to create 19 unicorns and uh, most of them in the last one and a half year the amount of opportunity that comes we could create hundreds of unicorns or we don't even need 100 unicorn i would say we need the 100 million 
MSMEs who are 100 crore, 200 crore in, my, in his own local areas, especially environment, then we are enabling the whole nation of inclusive innovation and everybody could be rich and happy and also enabling people. So it's a mind blowing opportunity if you can look at additive manufacturing as a key enabler for whatever your passion. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful session. Uh, quite an insightful and inspirational for the students. I, I request the students and faculty members that they, they watch the session again at their leisure, uh, looking at each of the slides meticulously, then doing a critical thinking that what they can do with respect to the the each slide so can we take just a couple of questions uh, i will i will just uh, tell you in in the reverse order uh, the question is by aditya Srivastav. sir why microprocessors are not made in india yeah i think we have uh, we are actually making microprocessor i mean we do a few microprocessor at a very low level I mean, it's happening. For example, SEL Chandigarh today has technology of up to 180 nanometer. And uh, we, I mean, at a smaller level, we are doing, I mean, my, see, microcontroller, microprocessor. I mean, at some level, we can actually do them. Uh, but then at higher level, yes, we don't. And because it has become more, the developed countries invested huge amount of money. India, for some reason, did not give enough importance to electronics when it was putting enough money in nuclear energy and uh, some of the defense requirements, or even put a uh, facility in space. At that time, some of the best Indian scientists who went left India are today heading most of the global semiconductor majors across the globe. We had the best people, material scientists in this country. You see, C.V. Raman invented, I mean, the I mean, the Raman phenomena. The Raman phenomena is essentially to say that if you could incident a polarized focus light, when you look at molecules and uh, you look in, in the, the polarizing capability, then even in one in a million probability, you can find the structure, it will reflect and show that this element exists. Whereas a normal microscope or normal process would only give me in one in 10, one in 100. And today, therefore, Raman, and it's a non-destructive process because you shine light, you get reflected light. And today, this technology is a non-invasive process for, for quality control to medical diagnostics, to production and all sorts of things across the globe. But we don't make Raman instrument in India. We don't have optics in India. Likewise, in semiconductors, so we sort of neglected it at some point. I'm sure everybody knows, even in 82, when uh, the Asian camps happened, most of the components for color TV for Malaysian and Taiwan companies went from India. Today, we don't make even that subcomponents, whereas, as you rightly said, microprocess happened outside. So it is maybe a policy planning lack. And when there were opportunities, even in 90, again, I think it was lack of imagination and policy planning, either from the government and equally from industries who are profit, they did not invest. Today, we are looking at it, but then today, the advantage is because you can still use embedded system and FPGA technology to create our own processes, even from, it is like saying, I buy the brick and then build my own house. You can still create, for example, IIT Chennai for Indian microprocessor has developed an open source based technology where it is very secure than most of the process. But yes, manufacturing, we are at least 15 generation behind the world when three nanometer technology happens, we are only doing 180 nanometer. But uh, sir, is, uh, don't have to worry about it, lot of opportunity besides this in additive manufacturing. Yeah. Sir, uh, just continuing this question, if we talk about the scale of investment required, for example, India is buying a lot of advanced weapon systems in terms of aircraft, howitzers, missiles, aircraft carriers. So if we compare the scale of investment, if we, if we put on one side the total investment in defense deals, maybe in the last 10 years, and if we talk about the scale of investment required for setting a complete uh, electronics manufacturing ecosystem. So what are your views on that? Uh, see, there are two, three things. That's where, I mean, there, there, today there are, as far as see, whole, globally itself, I mean, there are only hardly five to 10 semiconductor fabs which are viable. Though there are many more, but most of them do smaller level. Major fabs are hardly 10. I mean, uh, where, 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 I mean, maybe Intel has three or four global semiconductor, something TSMC, USMC have something. They are the major ones. And every button, we can, uh, they're a fabulous company like ARM, just from their architecture and system can now have customized 
exclusive processors built in TSMC, but to build the, their own uh, requirement. So on one side, we need to look at design and try to see if we can create some of this requirement and use the design probability to create secure processors at the processor level. But then as we are moving into this IoT age, and I am sure if everybody of you, uh, I am not sure how many of you have looked at something called International Roadmap for Devices and Systems. So please go to IEEE site. It is called IRDS. Anything from material to devices to, I mean, controls to logic to memory to even some of these new devices, like, I mean, for IoT, MEMS, sensors, electronics on glass, paper, plastic, flexible electronics called Beyond Moore are all discussed there as a technology roadmap. So we can look at it, do a cost via analysis and say over the next 10 years, even in a small viable way, build some of this ecosystem for IoT with security. Because you see, you could have the most mm, secured processor built because today we do IT embedded system design for everybody. But I buy a sensor from China and that sensor, what does it communicate without my knowledge? I don't know. It's actually done with a 10 or even a one millimeter technology and with some signal conditioning circuit. But I do not know what is it that it, it may communicate to uh, somebody else without my knowledge. So can we therefore use additive manufacturing to look at some of this millimeter, micron and nanometer, which can be done even from local? Because see, we are one of the largest printing capability. The textile capability in India is huge. India printers, most of the advanced secure currency to even say, I mean, advanced uh, sort of a chicks and uh, RFID embedded systems uh, for many companies and others in say Mangalore in Manipal. Uh, for many banks and all that. So that, I mean, it cannot be tampered. So therefore, we have a lot of these technologies from textile to processors, and most of the companies in Coimbatore make them. Companies in Pune and uh, I mean, uh, Bombay have capability or similarly high. So can we link them to build the ecosystem for the emerging area with security, do advanced processors of our own with our own IP, then we could actually combine all of this that at some part I could even buy, uh, for example, uh, the technology for a company. Say, like say China today has bought many US companies. Okay. And so I, for example, I don't know how many of you know, four or five years back, Toshiba uh, is a semiconductor company which had huge amount of financial problems. And uh, say Westington House is a nuclear technology company from America. They are sort of together with some joint collaboration and they had a huge problem. All the Indian companies, private companies had billions of dollars from LNT, Tata's to Infosys Bipro. To, I mean, say the government, all of them had billions of dollars outside. Can they have pooled together to create, to get a stake in Toshiba and Westington House so that they could have then got the patents, built our own capability here for our nuclear power to advanced reactors for chemicals to, I mean, say advanced medical, biochemical processes to even developing next generation process because the Toshiba also has electronic embedded system and chip fabrication on glass paper. All that could have happened. For example, Tata bought a whole new Nissan car factory when there was a downturn in uh, England. And from there, they started their Indica. And now they have enough capability. To, so it's a question of strategic planning. So we might not need too much of money because there's a lot of ecosystem available. Okay, sir. Uh, next question from Sharina Joy. Where can we learn more about the nanotech printing? Uh, you see learning one thing they all the there are enough papers and books available on the web that's why i did not talk more on the process and technology because many things are discussed most things are available on the web so and but some of the things i mentioned about how materials are enabling maybe it doesn't exist in a book in saying how because most of the polycrystal semiconductor book would either talk of nanotechnology or only printing or only talk of thin film or only talk of additive manufacturing but they're all integrated with simple this material amorphous nano i mean micro polycrystalline so as of now you don't have integrated book but standalone you have enough books and data to learn about it and also many of them you see all i would say is look at phd thesis i want to do screen printing inkjet printing find good five ten thesis talking about inkjet printing uh, from some good universities in Europe, Korea, Japan, Australia, or some things which are working on screen printing or nano imprint lithography and say, what is it that I can implement in mind? And so you will be in principle able to do many things within our limited means. Of course, not everything. And maybe if somebody has specific questions, we can also enable it or talk to them and facilitate. But enough information is available. Uh, to learn even on because as I said 21st century learning is ability to learn unlearn and relearn on our own I mean everybody teacher is only a facilitator but most of the time I should literally understand and implement 
so there is enough information and uh, we would be happy to even do a orientation for say some department to say how with what you have and what are your passion how can you now work together in say 18 months 20 months or 24 months or 6 months what can be done yeah thank you sir so we take the last question now in the interest of time uh, so professor satnarayan's email id is already shared uh, that is that is on one of the slides on this uh, this lecture so you can contact him directly uh, for any guidance or uh, mentoring okay so this is from aditya shrivastava additive manufacturing is a trillion dollar opportunity but it is expensive too no no that is why i said it's not expensive as i have shown some most of the equipment that i have shown in what we have done we have made it in india a thousand crore if facility effectively we created in 20 crore but some of this can be done as a first proof of concept see i if i can show a proof of concept people will invest if i can have a already proof of concept of material and a device i can send a proposal i will get money but if i say please give me so many crores to buy nobody will give so that i can do even if i have inkjet printing screen printing with some 10 15000 i can do i can do i mean say the pcb uh, layout equipments are available for a few lakhs and from that i can create patterns and do things so many depending on what i want to do and as i say or if i want to do molecular material with even a syringe i can plan and make solutions disperse them with appropriate pressure and do therefore the mo the most complicated technologies if i cannot implement it in the simplest of ways and convey it in the simplest of way i don't understand it that is inc okay he said so that therefore if we can understand initial proof of concept can be done for ad ad additive manufacturing does not as i said mean only laser based uh, i mean uh, nanoparticle fusion or a polymer uh, thing even polymer based 3d printing today is available for 10000 okay why abc feed is available for 10000 and p students are making it from no you do it yourself kit so therefore many aspect of additive manufacturing and equipments can be made in india depending on what you want to do anything from 5 10000 15000 to 1 lakh 2 lakh to 15 lakhs or of course even crores i mean depending on the level of complexity so it's a question of trying to say what is it that i want then additive manufacture that's where we want people to look at this large area flexible electronics additive manufacture based components products solutions i mean uh, to be looked at and also the look at higher energy also where defense and other areas can invest on some of them but others could happen even in every system yeah. thank you sir uh, thank you very much for uh, for the wonderful session so basically the the idea is that uh, uh, do not look directly at the equipment whether whether it is a 3d printer or any any semiconductor fab look at the problem look at the challenge look at the innovation so if you are able to present your your ideas or your your problem at a at a suitable forum you you will definitely definitely get the equipment yeah so that that is not an not an issue thank you sir thank you again thank you very much on behalf of iilm fraternity i i i thank you thank you very much so uh, the the students and uh, the faculty members to stay tuned so we will start with our next thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr uh, jyotsana the dean and also dr uh, shiv sharma for giving me this opportunity it would have been great if we could have we had a live interaction and i am hope hope i am open to interacting with all of you or even answering some queries and uh, or even looking at how can we enable i mean transformation if uh, there is an interest and it has been wonderful interacting hopefully as i said in the beginning uh, everything i said was not nonsense and it did make some sense and uh, thanks once again for your patient listening uh, have a great day thank you thank you sir thank you uh, okay so we uh, proceed further uh, in in our current program now i invite uh, dr josna singh director of engineering at iilm to take over and uh, Uh, she will basically now uh, take you through a, a walk through uh, of uh, of different departments uh, welcome ma'am uh, thank you dr shiv and i thank professor satyanarayan for such a wonderful and informative talk on additive and uh, subtractive manufacturing you have rightly communicated every concept which you wanted to sir and the stock is uh, very relevant to latest industry trends mm -hmm. and we should always learn and adapt to keep ourselves fit for the changing demand of the industry so that is true for all 
so good morning all and very warm welcome to the valedictory session of our one month uh, summer academic and internship program so today we are at the end of this uh, one month long program which has started on 11th of may and it is ending today on 6th of june so we have delivered five uh, specially designed custom made uh, programs to technology enthusiasts technology is something that can be learned at any stage of life uh if you have the passion to break the boundaries and you want to innovate then you can learn technology so there is no age to learn technology so we have uh, delivered five programs uh the program on data science and ai uh then the program on automation and iot uh the next program was on the latest technical aspects in plant science and bioinformatics then additive manufacturing and uh, all the areas in mechanical and automobile and civil uh the last program which we delivered was on fun with basics chemistry uh german language and mathematics so these programs were specially designed uh looking at the dynamics of the industry with with the aim to train and educate the workforce of our country which is definitely the workforce is the youth of our country and at ilm we always aim to train our students as well as the faculty members so that they can utilize their learning uh, in the development of the self or as well as the development of the country so by delivering uh, this four week program we feel satisfied and accomplished that we have met uh, the objective uh, with which we have started our program and i am also very fortunate to have a wonderful team Uh, who have worked day and night and delivered such wonderful program and made it a success uh, i am also very grateful to all the speakers who have delivered very insightful technical talks on current technologies from various reputed industries uh, from india and abroad thank you uh, thank you very much today at this platform i would like to personally thank each one of my team members from the summer academic and internship program SAIP 2020. So I would like to start the first team from CSC department for delivering a successful program on data science and AI. Uh, Dr. Hemlata, she is the team leader of computer science program, along with her team, uh, Dr. Manjula, uh, Ms. Swati. Thank you very much for delivering such a successful and wonderful program to the participants from all over India. Thank you very much. uh moving ahead with the next team i would like to thank the team from biotechnology department uh dr pallavi uh she is the team leader of this program uh bio escalator uh, which they delivered it on uh, plant science and latest technology in bioinformatics uh so dr pallavi along with her team members dr roma and dr uh, abhinav and dr nitin for delivering a successful program in biotechnology uh i would now like to thank the team uh, from electronics and communication department uh the team leader is dr vanya uh they have delivered the program on automation uh and iot uh automate your world along with mr piyush uh mr abdesh and dr astha thank you so very much for delivering this pro program successfully uh moving ahead with the next team uh of mechanical automobile and civil they have combined uh they have uh, delivered this program uh in a combination of these three streams mechanical automobile and civil uh, dr shiv and mr ranjan they are the team leaders along with dr shatrughan uh, ms ankita and mr gaurav sharma thank you very much uh now moving ahead with our next uh, program this is the last program which we deliver in the summer academic and internship which is uh, the basics beat the heat with basics so we have delivered the basics on chemistry german language and uh, mathematics so i thank dr dhiresh pathak uh, he has delivered uh, the basics in chemistry uh, ms hira for german language and dr nafees for delivering the program on mathematics so thank you very much so i would also like to thank the head of our social media team uh mr varun jindal 
for supporting uh, us day and night with all the content, with all the social media publicity. So thank you, Varun. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your support. And uh, uh, the, his team, along with his team, I thank everybody. So I also like to thank uh, Mr. Osama for providing us support with the live streaming of our programs, uh, with the FDP and with the Summer Academic and Internship Valedictory Session. So Osama, thank you very much for your, all your support with YouTube. Thank you so very much. I also like to thank the management for providing us the opportunity to organize this first ever program at ILM, this SAIP 2020. Thank you very much. I thank the entire participants from different colleges, different schools, different states of India, and few are from abroad also for attending uh, this uh, internship program and for attending most of our sessions and also for maintaining the discipline. Thank you very much. Hope we are able to meet your expectations. Thank you. Uh, we would like to end the ceremony uh, with the glimpses of this first uh, month's program from different departments. We have created a video out of it. So we would like to end the ceremony with this video. And I request Dr. Shiv to please play the video. Uh, once again, I, uh, thank you very much. We would look forward to have you with us in our forthcoming programs. Uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Shiv. I am very thankful to ILM College of Engineering to provide me a platform to gain knowledge. In these sessions, we get to learn about the manufacturing and working of many electrical objects and the scope of electronics in industrial area. The expert lectures from renowned scientists was a positive point in this program. And I would always prefer to join such online programs from your side. It was very informative and it was a very great program. The guest lectures were very interactive. It's really appreciable to the efforts and hard work that has been put in by the organizers. And I would really love to attend all the future further programs and projects that will be held by IALM. They are also provided with different types of videos, activities, links, assignments, uh, which were also useful for me and beneficial for me. This course is very beneficial for me. And this course provides the basis of this type of research and provides the research and it has, I have to take the further knowledge of the different also. So this course provides me a better start. I decided to attend the camp and it has been very fruitful to me. The faculty who got us through the program were very cooperative. They explained us everything in details. Like every minute detail was explained to us in, in a such short span of time. Like it is extremely commendable how uh, the faculty got us through everything in such a short span of time. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in to our YouTube channel uh, for uh, this uh, conclusive, uh, conclusive session uh, or the valedictory session, what, what we want to call it. Uh, I hope that uh, all the participants, they, they had a wonderful time here and uh, they will take uh, 
the memories of IILM for long and also please uh, keep on checking our website that is iilmct.ac.in uh, in future also we will be coming up with the more exciting programs and also we invite you to join us physically uh, whenever we organize our uh, regular annual tech fest cultural fest and sports fest as well uh, and also we do have an active uh, mhrd institution innovation cell uh, we keep on organizing lectures and several competitions on behalf of that so just keep on participating uh, there okay so goodbye to all uh, thanks for this wonderful journey thanks for coming along goodbye have have fun uh, now just uh, focus on your exams coming up in july goodbye goodbye all goodbye all thank you very much